This is Overpass. Now it's not your typical three lane map like Dust2, Mirage, or Cache, and in some ways it feels like a fresh take on Nuke's vertical map layout, but one that always has that threat of a cobble style B explode to always think about. But unlike with Nuke, it's a bit more spectator friendly, and unlike with cobble, it encourages CT aggression. For some teams, the most they'll do is poke around at bathrooms and fall back when they see someone. Great teams though, they see the value in a well-timed bathrooms, balloons, and even fountain push on the right round. To look further into this concept of pushing aggression to its limits, we've got a couple of high stakes matches with Rain and Fur versus Tier 1 competition. Now in front of us is a heat map that shows where Rain and Fur kill players on their CT side. One of the first things that should strike your attention is that there's only actually one kill that comes from the A site itself. Now if we contrast that with their monster KD ratios, it makes you wonder how the hell they got away with being so aggressive over and over again. As an analyst watching Overpass's meta develop over the years, it's always made sense to me why A players pushed up to this initial point of contact. But seeing this aggression take new heights and still be successful has me begging the questions, why, how, and when? Let's start with why. So as an A player on CT side, you've got a lot of free room to push up and set up in different positions. The reason that's nice is because the site cover is limited and the choke points are wide. Versus Ecos, keeping long angles and getting info early ensures that you can take three to four different fights in a round at very low risk. It also lets your teammates know ahead of time if they need to make that big rotate from B. Now, if you want to get even more frisky, peeking mid straight up can tell your teammates if it is or isn't heavy A. Just because there's no one there doesn't mean you have that information. And if you take a good spawn, that can mean your teammates can play up to 4B, which is big money. This leads us into the next question, which is how. Watching some of these rounds, it looks straight up audacious the way that Rain and Fur were jumping balloons and walking up to the fountain versus rushing players. Now a lot of that has to do with the when, but there's also something cool about the way Fur pushed in specific that I want to show you. Let's look at the rounds. Phase 1 to default and Fur was pushing for the first time in the half. So he did have the element of surprise, but FaZe have Guardian opting specifically for his push. What's interesting about this moment is that Fur gets a kill and gets away without even an op shot going off. Now if you didn't catch that, Fur specifically ducked under Guardian's scope by the fountain, and if he hadn't, it's pretty clear he would have died. Now it's not 200 IQ, but it is a bit of good awareness on his part, and as we can see, it made Olaf feel way too comfortable flying around the corner thinking that if someone pushes, that they get opt. On Rain's side of things, he performs a relatively identical push on the same round to keep the pressure on. Watch as he takes out Rez versus a fast A play and then gets traded out by Forrest who comes up the ramp late. This is a good moment to not totally sensationalize these types of pushes. Everything in Counter-Strike is circumstantial, and sometimes going this far will mean going one for one. But the early info he gets helps sweeten the deal, and the impact he has on future rounds is also pretty big. This next round from both players is a great example of that. Versus Ecos, Rain and Fur always push long. Well, Rain would throw in a stairs push every now and again, but never would either of them jump balloons if they knew the other team was saving. Here's Rain's POV from round 8. After just showing presence on the fountain push, NIP see a chance to get a free kill and attempt to dissuade him from ever trying that again. Forrest jumps around the corner only to find out that Rain didn't push fountain, and instead waited at the corner of long to line up both him and get right. Fur does something similar, and just like with Nip, FaZe anticipated his aggression, but didn't clear everything. What we're basically seeing is both of them use their previous presence to their advantage, not overextending, and then capitalizing hard. Now maybe there's a case here for peppering in a couple of stairs pushes like Rain did, as a for well, maybe got a bit predictable at some point. Nonetheless, the when might just be the most important part. If you do it right, it feels to the other team as though you're overextending every round when in reality, you're sometimes just throwing a smoke just to keep them guessing at A. In the T's eyes, if they think you're pushing, they're always going to want to try to get that kill, even one for one. And that can mean you're making it harder for them to trade on other parts of the map. Now aim is definitely important to being forward aggressive at A. And you do only put the most capable players who are willing to do this solo in this kind of position. The value though, as we talked about earlier, is the map control, the early information, and the constant attention of the terrorists who want to kill and don't want to get flanked. It's interesting that by threatening properly at A, you're not only slowing down the default, but also alleviating the threat of a B rush by allowing your teammates to stack and also being a quick flank if they need it. We've really only scratched the surface with a few examples in this video, but these CT side plays are what's separating the best overpass teams from everyone else right now. 
I definitely recommend combing through POVs if you want to try this at home. And if you're just trying to figure out who's doing it best, look no further than fur and rain.